and my uncle died. Well, he was my great uncle, actually, and was really close with him. And it was such a shock for me because my uncle was in my prayers all the time, you know, and I was praying as a child. And I couldn't really understand it properly, but I still had no bitterness, though, you know, against the Lord, and I still kept on praying for all the other family. And then I just remember then starting secondary school, and then as I entered secondary school, suddenly, like, things come in, like the Word of God says, you know, things come in and they, and they snatch, you know, the word away from you. Or they, we, we didn't really even have a word because I still at this point didn't even know what the gospel was, but they, they were snatching whatever bit of truth I had away. Friends were coming in, um, just uh, being in the secondary school, just so many things, so many things. And um, and the friends that I had as well, there was a, exactly the same situation as me, never had any Christian upbringing, nothing. And um, I just... I don't know. And then it was like um, I almost became embarrassed then before them to think that I could even think, you know, of, of Jesus Christ or that there is a God. And then obviously then as you go through secondary school and, and evolution comes in and, and from the television, from secondary school, from all walks of life, you can't get away from it. And suddenly it was almost like, yeah, of course there's, there's no God. You know, I actually like... You know, would I remember a teacher at secondary school saying, um, who in here believes in God? And I remember looking around thinking, oh, nobody's going to put their hand up. And I remember this one girl called Jennifer Clegg put her hand up, and she must be so brave, you know, when she put her hand up. And I just thought, wow, you know, how silly, how silly, you know. And then I remember him saying, you know, and, and who, so I take it then everybody else is an atheist, and everybody was like so quick, you know, to put their hands up. You know, it was like it's a big bragging thing. You know, yes, of course, I'm an atheist. And, and basically, so that's where I was through my secondary um, school. And, and then, obviously, then my life reflected that. Because there isn't a God, we're not accountable to anybody. What does it matter, you know? I'm not saying I was a horrible out-and-out -out person, but then at the same time, <laughs> through, like, my, my years growing up, um, I wouldn't even speak of the things, you know, that, that, that happened in those years. And it would be a shame. And... And then I met Kevin, and we was very young, um, and our lives really together was just your you normal, um, you know, relationship of the world, really. You know, you, you don't really have to get married. You know, you can still do what you want to do, really. You know, you'd have to make a commitment. And then we got engaged, and it was together for, like, engaged for, like, 10 years, you know, and then... And then I got pregnant with Dylan, who's my oldest son. And life really began to change. Um, we had a baby on the way. We wasn't married. Um, and just, I think life really sank in that we'd have to kind of, you know, we're, we're, we're soon to be parents, responsibility. And then... Um, we had a terrible time, and we actually, um, we split up, and, um, and then when I had Dylan, sorry, when I had Dylan, um, we just, I think Dylan was about two, no, 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 he would have been about six months old, and I remember um, just, I don't know, wanting to run away from life. Um, and just wanting to get away from everything, really, to be honest. And then Kevin, um, one morning I, I woke up and he just wasn't there. I was in this house at the time, because we moved in when I had Dylan, so this was like six months down the line. He wasn't there, and I thought, where's he gone? Where's he gone? And, and to be honest with you, I thought, he's gone. He's left. You know, he's had enough, he's left. Um, and then he came back around about like dinner time ish. I said, Where have you been? Where have you been? And he said, um, I don't know. He said, I just woke up this morning and I felt the Lord. No, he didn't say I felt the Lord. But he just said, I felt like I had to go to church. <laughs> and, um, and it was the local Anglican church. And I remember thinking, Church, what's he going to church for? You know, this is crazy. You know, who goes to church nowadays? And um, 
he started going there every Sunday and um, and he was coming back and and the Lord was just driving him to go to church um, and then Kevin wasn't converted at this point but then he was we was there basically he he then started to take me along because everybody was saying to him oh bring your girlfriend and your son you know why are they not coming so I started coming along with Kevin and I remember going there to the Anglican church and um, I just I remember thinking wow this is just like taking me back into the past you know all these memories coming back of like being at school and in the church and with my grandma and, and I remember starting to sing songs and things and and I don't know you know something within me then started to like light again in a sense I still didn't know the truth I still didn't know the gospel but there was something there you know some kind of the Lord doing something some kind of work and um I guess I was there for seven years and then after that seven years one day I mean you probably you've all heard Kevin's testimony I don't know Kevin was in the garden and um that day was um I mean I remember that day he came in the house and he, and he couldn't keep still he's walking around you know and we, we we didn't know what being born again was that day we didn't know um but from that day onwards Kevin just changed he, he just completely changed and but then you see rather than that me kind of um making everything okay it was then even harder of a battle for me because I thought oh no, what's going on what's going on and then all Kevin could do was just reading his bible all the time you know he'd, he'd go to every meeting at the Anglican church he wouldn't miss one and then he started writing like magazine he was he would just had this passion for God and um but then rather I, then I, I started to read the bible and and rather than sort of like read it to find truth I was reading it to find fault and every time I found something in the Bible and um, that really just like aggravated me and like like for instance and um, when Jesus says you know um, to pluck out your eye and to you know to cut off your right hand you know it, um, and, and I'd pick these texts up and I'd be like oh this is ridiculous how can people do this you know how can you that that's just nonsense anything I could grab hold of I would I'd start trying to almost tear Kevin's faith down and almost try to I just wanted to I just didn't want the Bible I just didn't want the Bible because I and then anyway I remember as well then I started to kind of Kevin we then went to a Calvary Chapel church which was um I, you know met some lovely people there but what I started to do was then because the people were so nice and so lovely I started to try to fit in which is the worst thing anybody can ever do. Never try and fit in. If you know you're not right with God, never try and fit in. It's the worst thing you can do. And, and so then because I was trying to fit in, I was trying to convince myself that I, I actually know, I, I, I knew the Lord. You know, I was trying to convince myself. So then, because everybody was just so lovely, so caring, and I, I'd read my Bible, and, and I'd read it, but I'd not read it... Um, I wouldn't read it with like an honest truth of trying to seek what God wanted for my life. And and I'd, I'd, I'd read it without really believing as well the promises of God and what I was reading. And then um, and, and another example as well I was just thinking of was when I, 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 I was ashamed as well because I remember like going to like with family and, and friends and things and and I'd always think, oh no, Kevin, please don't, don't start talking about the Lord. Please not here. Don't start talking about the Lord. Please not, not here. And I, I, and I couldn't relax for fear that Kevin might actually tell somebody, you know, about the Lord. I, and, 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 it was and, and I remember like, even in the car, you know, we'd have music on sometimes and if he'd like had the window down and I think other people could hear the Christian music being played, I'd want to like wind the windows up, you know, and, and oh, it, it really was just, um, yeah, it was it was almost as if I, I was embarrassed. And then, um, from that, I'll kind of move on a bit as well. Um, Kevin got um, asked if he'd go and pastor a church in Fleetwood. And we went there, and at this point, again, I just I just thought, you know, I, I, I knew the Lord. I felt I'd really grown, and I'd gained so much knowledge. Um, and I, I, I'd convinced myself I, I, 
I was fine with the Lord, absolutely convinced myself I was fine with the Lord. And um, anyway, our time in Fleetwood um, was a lovely time. And then again, as soon as Kevin started to touch on the gospel and one of his sermons about being born again, there were so many people that were so angry um, because Kevin had preached, you must be born again. And, um, and the amazing thing was as well is that actual sermon even angered me a bit. I remember going home thinking, um, and, and I said to Kevin, I said, I said oh, you can't preach like that. You can't preach, this is, this is an Anglican church. You, you can't preach like that. Telling people they must be born again. It, look at all the people you've offended, that's it now, you know. I was no better than them, but at the time I still didn't know I was like them. I thought I, I knew God. And, and rather than support Kevin, all, all I did was just pull Kevin down. I just pulled him down and pulled him down. I was not a godly wife whatsoever. It was terrible. And then um, I remember actually going to the bathroom at Fleetwood. And I remember getting down on the floor. And I even said to the Lord. And it was the first time really that I'd kind of like come to God, like knowing I had nowhere else to go because I had to come because it really was desperate times for us at these times. And I remember getting on the bathroom floor and just saying, Lord, where, where, what's happening? What's going on? You know, we're here in this church. And I think the people just want us to go. Where, where are we going? What are we supposed to do? And the scripture even came to me where um, the Lord Jesus says, you know, the, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. And I just think the mercy of God, because he could even speak to me then. And I was miles away from it, you know, the grace of God and the mercy of God. And I just got up off the floor and it was like an answer. And I just knew from that point we weren't staying. You know, didn't even have to wait for like what the people had to say. It was like the Lord had told us we were going, you know. And um, so anyway, um, this was um, 2009, Christmas 2009, we came back. And then after we came back then, because I'd set all my hopes up, on Kevin kind of having this church and we was going to have this lovely um, man's house to live in, you know, and, and, and a lovely church. And I had all this like fairy tale nonsense in my head, really. And the Lord had like, it's almost like he just swept the rug from under my feet, you know, all, all my hopes and all my dreams, they're just gone. So we came back to this house and I just fell into complete depression, complete and utter depression because, um, I didn't know where I was anymore. I didn't know what we were supposed to be doing anymore. And my life was just, I was just depressed, constantly depressed all the time, you know, moping around. And um, and then um, I was even reading a book actually by Martin Lloyd-Jones called Spiritual Depression. And um, and it actually, it, it, it helped. And um, so I started to, to seek God a bit more earnestly. And then, well, then it was it was 2009, it'll be, and it was the, the 9th of March, and it was a Monday morning, and I was sat in that corner where Evelyn sat now on the purple settee, and um, I just, I was just really, really down. And the night before, I was reading in Romans, um, I wasn't reading Romans chapter 10, I was actually reading Romans chapter 11, where basically um, Paul talks about um, the vine, you know, and, and if we being grafted in, how much more should we live for Christ, you know? But it, that had like, it had, it, it wasn't, it wasn't doing anything. I was kind of, my mind was all over the place. And, um, and then my eyes jumped to Romans chapter 10, verse, um, 13 and um and i've heard it said it's like sometimes when you're reading the bible it's like you've got 3d glasses on and you you know and the the scripture just jumps out at you it's like Shh. this is what happened and i just saw the scripture it said for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and that night i went to bed crying over that scripture i said lord your word says whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved i said lord I don't know if you're true. I don't know if you're real. I said, but your word says this. I said, Lord, you've got to save me. And that night, I was like this, just crying and burdened. And, and the weight, I can't describe to you, this weight I had on me. And um, like I said, I was sat where Evelyn sat now. 
the following morning and um, I just said, God, I cannot go on like this. I asked you last night, your word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I feel no different. So I got up from there and I went into the kitchen. I just poured my heart out to God. Absolutely everything, any kind of like anger I had towards people, family, friends, Kevin even, just everything just came out. Absolutely everything that was on my heart just came out to God and it was just, it was everything, just, just all me feeling sorry for myself, everything came out. And then, as I was like just pouring out everything to God, suddenly it was like, um, I can't describe it. Um, it was like, the Lord had just sort of like, I don't know, it's like when you're pulling off a jumper and it's inside out, it's like the Lord did that to me and he, and he showed me myself. And for the first time in my life, the things I saw, what the Lord revealed to me that morning was absolutely disgusting. I'd never seen such a vile person. And I just broke down. Because I was just such a vile person. The Lord had truly shown me my sin. And then all of a sudden, it was like, um, I can't describe it really. It was almost like a, like a vision like of the cross and almost like I saw the Lord Jesus on the cross like here I was like for the first time in my life I, the Lord, I, should, I saw I, I was a sinner and I saw that the Lord Jesus Christ had actually died for me for my sins for the very first time in my life and it absolutely broke me it broke me and I just um I just came to the Lord, I was like, Lord, forgive me, how dare I say this about these people, how dare I say that about my husband, how dare I say, it was just, oh dear, and then, and then after that, it was like, it's like the, 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 the you know, when the Lord was baptised, and he says, and the, and the spirit of God descended like a dove, that's all I can describe it. It was like this, this the, the spirit of God just decent. It was like a, a peace, an absolute peace. And all this burden that I was carrying with me from just life, it just like, it was like lifted. It was, it was gone. It was just, it was like um, John Bunyan in the Pilgrim's Progress. And he's got this big backpack on his back and it suddenly just like drops the backpack off. It was like that. It was like, oh, it's free. You know, for the first time in my life, it was like, I was absolutely ecstatic. <laughs> it was wonderful. And I was just like bounding, and and it's like it's like the sun had suddenly like just come up, and and it was shining through the window in the kitchen, and it was like, I was like, wow, I'm free. You know, it's like it's forgiven me. The Lord Jesus has forgiven me, and I just came bounding out of the kitchen, jumping about and everything, and I ran up the stairs, and as I got to the top of the stairs, I was like thinking, oh, I can't tell Kevin. The Lord saved me, can I? I thought, he, he thinks I'm already saved, you know. But that it just, I, it, it, I couldn't. I, I, I just went bounding in the bedroom, and I, and and Kevin was reading his Bible. I'm like, Kevin, the Lord saved me. The Lord saved me. The Lord saved me. And Kevin's like, he's completely no speechless, and he didn't know what to say because I was just, I was just full of it, and he couldn't stop me. You know, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was just so excited. And then it was just like started smiling, and he was like laughing, and then the children came in, and oh. Oh dear, I came back downstairs and um, I don't know, the rest of that day was just amazing for me. It was absolutely amazing and um, it was just wonderful. And then um, I remember me, um, my mum come that same day and I told her what had happened. And she was trying to explain it all the way, you know, it's like, oh, well, you, you just poured out your heart, you know, you, you, you feel better, really, you know, you've had a good cry, and, you know, you put, you, everybody feels better, you know, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, no, and I was like, mommy, you just don't understand, and I, and I remember she was going, and, and I went to give her a hug, but this feeling I got as I went to give her a hug, it was like, like a weight when I went to give her a hug it was a weight and it was a law telling telling me you know your mum doesn't know me your mum doesn't know me and you know where she's going now and it's like a, a grief and then so you know and and I just I just wish that that weight sometimes would come back you know for the loss because I, I feel sometimes I feel like um I do the Lord a disfavor 
because I feel like I don't do enough, you know, I, I should be, um, sometimes I feel like I should be going to family and sitting down with family, you know, one by one, and maybe that's what the Lord's telling me to do even now, you know, to just, um, and, um, yeah, and that, so that was the day that I came to the Lord, and, um, and I do remember, though, the week after that, um, I actually sort of started to lose like that kind of being up here with the Lord, you know, and because I, I'd, I'd neglected reading my word and because I was living on a high, you know, it's almost like, oh, I don't need the word now, you know. And, um, but then I remember um, the, the song, I went to a funeral that week, it was my uncle's and it was, um, it was a, the song that's like, do not be afraid for I have redeemed thee, I have called you by your name, you are mine. And I didn't have a clue that that was Isaiah. And it was only when a friend told me that it was Isaiah and I read that scripture and, um, and, and I just hold on to that now. You know, I've redeemed you, I've called you by your name, you're mine. That, that's my, you know, my scripture now for forever. And, 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 and the other one, of course, as well, you know, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, you know. And, um, and I, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, anybody here as well who may feel they don't know again just read the word of god believe what it says and ask what it tells you to you know anybody um but that's my testimony anyway so. <laughs>